We're up. Okay, welcome once again to Ask 31. Jeff Merrick alongside Elliot Friedman. This program is always brought to you by the Sportsnet Bracket Challenge, powered by EA Sports NHL 20. Our special guest today uh, to class up the place uh, a little bit is Melody Daou of the, uh, the national women's team, uh, joining us from saint Zotique. Did I get that right, Melody? Right out of the gate. Perfect. Ah uh, bien, c'est vrai. So, um, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, before we get going on hockey questions, and we have plenty, uh, and we'll take audience questions as well from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever. Um, I live around the corner from the Carrick family. Uh, the Carricks have a, one son, Sam, who plays in the Anaheim organization, another son, Trevor, uh, who plays with the San Jose Sharks organization. And on their property, uh, they have a sugar shack. And they've most recently bought uh, a maple farm, uh, I think about 150 acres in Bancroft. Is it true that your parents as well, Melody Dawu, have a sugar shack? It is true. Yeah, we own a sugar shack. It's only for our family, but we do sell the maple syrup. And let me tell you, it's probably it has to be the best one in the world. Like <laughs> I put it on everything. My friends would tell you that. Now, are you now? Have you have you tried those? I mean, one of the the things on the horizon are sort of maple sugar energy drinks or recovery drinks. Have you ever tried those? I haven't yet, but I will be uh, open to suggestion. That's for sure. Okay, last sugar shack question: Is this something? <laughs> uh, sorry, I know you want to get the hockey. Is no, this no, 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 it's is good. is this something that you yourself want to get into once your playing career is 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 done, or is it just hey, I, I want to put some nice maple syrup on my waffles here? That's a good question. I just talked about it yesterday with my dad actually, and I was like, when you're done with that, I want to get into it because it's so good, and I think it's so nice to just for the family to meet up, and yeah. it's a very casual place where we go every weekend and we see our family there. Um, yeah, it's nice, and I think I would love to have it. That's awesome. Okay, Elliot, those are my hard hitting questions. I got to tell you, that's better than anything <laughs> I got. Like, uh, looking at the smile on Melody's face as she talks about that, nothing I'm going to come up with is as good as that. <laughs> um, you know, when I think of you, Melody, I think of one of your more recent performances, and that was at the All Star game in St. Louis. And you scored, and Canada beat the U.S. in that game. But, you know, one of the things that I've, I've heard a lot from that weekend is how the players who played in that game said, we have to put on the best show of All-Star Weekend. Yeah. You know, some of the players, can, uh, the male players, they can loaf around and, and not try that hard. But the women's players were saying, not a chance. Talk about the lead up to that weekend and how important that showcase was for you. Yeah, I think the girls did talk about it. Uh, we were like, okay, are we going there just to have fun or we're going there to promote women's hockey? What's our goal there? And we came up with the fact that that was going to be the first time that we would play in front of 20,000 people uh, pack rink and that we would be uh, playing at hockey hours where our fans can watch us on TV. And when we think about the Olympics, we usually play at 2 a.m. in the morning. So that time was like right up, um, I think it was at 7 p.m. or something, our game that night. So everyone could have watched. And it was a great time to promote women's hockey, to showcase our, our product and make sure that uh, we were ready for that. And I think, uh, yeah, it was really intense. We, it was a three-on-three, -three, um, no whistle. So I could have uh, probably used another line on our bench, but <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun and we got treated so well. Was there money on the board? Ah, huh. good question. In women's hockey, there's not well, uh, any money on the board. Okay, we got a no. We were really happy to to bring back the the win. Obviously, every time we we meet against uh, US, it's always a competition, um, and it's a huge rivalry. So for us to be able to to win that series was uh, just fun for us. All right. Uh, we have a question from Lauren on Facebook. Why number 15? Good question. Um, well, <laughs> uh, when I was younger uh, with Team Quebec, I think everyone know uh, Marie-Philippe Poulain. I used to wear number 10. She did wear number 10, so I had to switch there. Um, so I went 10 plus 7, which is my birthday. Uh, so it was 17. And then I used 17, number 17, all the way to McGill University. 
And then when I played my first year with Team Canada under 18, I also wore uh, number 17. And then right up to the Olympic team, uh, number 17 wasn't available because Botteril had it. Mm-hmm. They had it needed to be um, put on the side for, I think the rule is something like a full Olympic circle. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I went to 15, which was Danielle Goyette number, and nobody had uh, worn it since. And yeah, those were big shoes to fill, that's for sure. Well, that's what I'm curious. I was wondering, did someone say to you, you know, that's that's Danielle Goyette's number. Are you sure you want that? Yeah, well, it's funny because she's amazing. She, I worked with her a couple of summers. Um, she taught me how to skate in a more efficient way. And when I decided to go with 15, she right away came up to me and because she was in Calgary and we have a really good uh, relationship. And she, she said, like, this is a great number. I'm really happy. It's an- another Frenchie that has it. And yeah, <laughs> it was nice to have her um, just pass it along to me. <laughs> That, okay, first of all, that's hilarious. And that's a great story. And you mentioned Marie-Philippe Poulain, who's, you know, an inspiration for hockey players coast to coast. Um, she'll go down as one of the greatest ever. Uh, just a spectacular player. You and her, whenever you're on the ice together, you guys have something special. And your main calling card, anytime I ask anyone, you know, tell me one thing about Melody Dawu that you notice. They always say she's smart. Like the smartest player on the ice is always you. Why do you think you click with Marie-Philippe Poulain so well? Uh, I think uh, whoever plays with Poo uh, is going to click. But <laughs> I do think that, um, yeah, I'm a great passer and I see the play as well. And I think I like to hold on to the puck a little longer than the other players so then I can make the right play. And uh, Poo is great at opening up and to find a scene to the net. And I think, that's one of her strengths is to put the puck in the net. So wherever I'm, I, I am on the ice, I think it's always a good option to pass it to her so she can shoot. And that's a role that I take really seriously because I, I know that's going to help us win a hockey game. Mm-hmm. I, I've the, also, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Jeff. I was going to say, do you remember the first time you played with her? Like, what was that like? Like something like that can be intimidating, overwhelming. I mean, she's Marie-Philippe Poulain here. Do you remember the first few times playing with her? Um, first time was actually with Team Quebec, um, my first year, her last year, and we did really well then, but then we didn't play together, uh, since 2018. Like we, no coaches liked us together, I guess, because we would see each other a lot, but I find that now coaches start to understand that we have something special and we just need to find somebody else to, uh, help us grow our line, um, our duo. And I think we're so close off the ice now that, no, it's not intimidating. I think it's just our relationship. We push each other uh, in the gym every day. And I think we're, we're doing the same on the ice. You know, there's rumors that she that she is a big, a good partner in golf too. There is, the, this rumor is out there that she's a, you're a really good golf partner for you. Is that true? Yeah, if you want to play Vegas, you you need her for the drive. That's for sure. <laughs> Big hitter. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, from Jason on YouTube, any funny stories about playing in Sochi that fans wouldn't know? Uh, in Sochi, not playing, but after uh, the final and after almost every event. I don't know if you guys heard the story, but. We took a bus to go out and it was all Canadian athletes. So we all had the winter uh, Canada winter jacket. It was very special. And we started the song from Celine Dion uh, in the bus. (laughs) And everybody started singing. We sent a video on Twitter and Celine came back to us. She replied. Um, That was quite special. And just the way that we walked uh, in the streets i think we were like 200 athletes going out together uh, from canada and that was a special moment uh who's got who's the worst singer who thinks they're the best singer oh that's tough i would say me (laughs) (laughs) but um i think we have a really good singer on our team and that nally spooner yes yes yeah yes uh she is not shy 
I no. wanted to ask you, uh, Melody, do you do you ever watch that game? Like, do you ever put that gold medal game on just when you're sitting around? Just because I remember like we were out, we were in Sochi, of course, working for CBC at the time. And there were some people I knew who were so upset that Canada was about to lose. Exactly. We were out, we were having a few beers and they left. Yeah. And we couldn't wait to call them and tell them, you know, you guys missed what you missed. So I wonder if you ever put that game in and just watch it for the fun of it. Um, no, I don't. But I have a few clips uh, when I do presentation in school or for businesses. And I think um, I probably watched that last two minutes, 55 seconds, 100 times. Um, and yeah, I could describe you the game like minute by minute. But um, funny enough, like I s I've seen like Sochi, the Sochi game so many times, but the Pyeongchang game, I didn't ever watch it back. So um, yeah. I wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah. I understand. I I, I, I'm, I'm curious, what do you tell businesses? Like I'm really interested in that. So when you see go to businesses and you speak to them, what do you tell them about that game in 2014? Uh, I, I just think about... Um, I talk about my personal uh, life of how I became an Olympian. Um, every like I think they can relate about perseverance a lot um, and team chemistry with the business side of it. And that was all like for me. Like I've been cut from teams so many times. I've been injured, and it's all those step backs that businesses can relate to. But to keep going if you have a a goal in mind and that you can achieve it no matter what happens to you. Um, this is something that they relate a lot and about the game, like, yeah, it's, you need to keep believing and to trust that you have prepared enough um, to achieve your goal. Then uh, that's what we did. And I think that's what businesses can do to, um, with their employees. Mm -hmm. I've got a bunch of questions about Sochi All right, and I want to get to as many as I can here as we can, as we can squeeze in, but Kelly Stack and the rolling puck in the dying moments of the third period, Canada down two to one, and it hits the post. Where were you and what was going through your mind at that moment? Like, honestly, Melody, that is a visual that will stick with me forever. Mm -hmm. I will never forget that moment and how I felt watching that thing. Yeah, I think everybody that I talked to about that game had their own story about where they were but yeah I was on the bench and when I started seeing that puck uh, coming down the ice it looked like we were on uh, I was watching on TV and I would just go slow motion like it was the weirdest <laughs> thing ever because that puck was it couldn't have rolled any slower and yeah. when it did hit the post like I still have chills from it like it was <laughs> crazy that energy we had on the bench just rised up and we all looked at each other saying like oh my god this is like a sign we're gonna get that game and sure enough we didn't uh go on our heels we just went forward and we won the game like it's amazing to think about i think if you want to write a, a movie about it like people would say oh my god this is just so cheesy but <laughs> like this is that was crazy. Um, I, I want to ask you about the, the style of play that Canada had that year. And um, there was that, that was a challenging year for Team Canada. Um, the United States handled you all, all season long. Like the games are always competitive, but USA is going into this one as the favorite. They're handling Team Canada. And then something changed. Like the style of play changed. Remember, US would always. I can't remember whether everyone on your blue line shot left or shot right, but it made dump-ins really easy for the United States. And it'd be back in the same corner, back in the same corner. And then all of a sudden, Team Canada started breaking the puck out up the middle. And everything changed. Like going into Sochi, like how much did you guys have to change the way you played? That one was really obvious. I'm sure there's other ways other than just, oh, they're firing the puck up the middle now and it's getting them out of the zone. What else did you guys change? Because it looked like a different team. Yeah, well, throughout the entire year, we're practicing little part of our game all the way to the Olympics. So at the beginning of the year, we only work on 
I don't know, breakouts. And then we only work on zone entry. And then we go on and on and on. And I think by the end at the Olympics, that's where you want to put everything together. So we knew we would doing that, we would maybe not win every single game throughout the series of the year against US, but we really wanted in every game to focus on one aspect that we were at during our uh, process of learning as a team. Mm -hmm. And I think when we did started that, it was, uh, well, we, our coach got fired um, like in December or yeah, in December. And then Kevin Deneen came along um, and then we started doing that. And I think that comes from the NHL a lot. Um, you see these breaking out in the middle, you have way more space uh, to distribute the puck. And for us, yeah, it, it made our life way easier. And I think Hockey Canada has changed that perspective of going up the wall. Uh, yes, we're trying to go up the metal as often as possible because it does open up the ice a lot. Okay. we got some uh, viewer questions I want to get to here. Uh, Liz on Facebook, toughest player to play against? Um, good question. There's a lot, but I would say either Decker, uh, because she's an amazing hockey player. Um, she's a, she's a goal scorer. Um, but for me, as a as a forward, um, Bellamy would be a D that I'm trying not to go on our side when I go down the, the ice. Oh, that's interesting. How come? Why is that? I think she's like she has a long reach. She's very mobile on her on her skates. Um, she's tough. Like she she can hit you pretty hard. So. Um, no, I think she's a very good overall hockey player. Now, Melody, do you think there's a player on another team who, if I asked them, who's the uh, opposing player that you hate to play against, they would you, you would be their answer. Is there somebody out there who would say, I can't stand Melody Daou more than anybody else? I don't know. They would have to tell me, I guess, but... <laughs> I, I would like that. I think it's a it's a compliment. If you, you're hard to play against, uh, it means that you're doing your job properly and that you're a good hockey player. See that means when you when they don't like you, that means you're they don't they don't hate the people that are bad. That's the way I always look at it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Richard on Facebook. Besides winning gold, what's your favorite hockey memory that you were a part of? Um. Decide winning gold. I think um, I'll go back, but um, okay. in CJF, at I went to Edouard Montpetit, and that year uh, we played. I think like twenty games in CJF that you play. We won all of them, and we won the championship that year. And uh, we had an amazing team, great team chemistry, and that was a lot of fun. Okay. Now Jeff has a problem with the hamster that runs the electricity in his house. Like I guess it just doesn't run fast enough. This happened the other day with Ryan Kessler and mm -hmm. apparently it's happened again today. So I, I just want to take you back. Like there's a, like one of the things that we're trying to do now is, is get more people, um, you know, more people uh, of different backgrounds into hockey. And there's a lot of, uh, Jeff's hamster is back. There we go. So there's a lot of young girls who are going to watch hockey right now and they're watching you and they want some advice. Like, how did you make it fun? As you talked about, you were cut from many teams. How did you make it fun for yourself? What kind of lessons or advice would you give to young players who pick up a hockey stick or get a pair of skates and to make it fun so they can enjoy hockey? Yeah, I think you said it right. Like, make it fun is the number one for me. Um, from since I was five years old, um, it was me asking my parents to play. And since then, it has always been me wanting to play. And I think I'm one of the first one on the ice, always the last one to get off. And it's because I could stay on the ice literally all day. Like I love being on the ice, being with my friends and getting better. And that's something that I think differentiate me. Uh, from other player that made it that far and as long as I love it and I'm still in love with the game uh, I want to stay there and the other thing I would say is to never give up like mm. you're gonna get cut it's gonna get tough and you're gonna have to train even harder and harder as you go up 
uh, the ladder. And I think it's really important to never give up because no is going to be an end, is going to be said to you for sure. Um, nobody has a perfect uh, trajectory up the ladder, but um, if someone say no, learn from it and get even mm. stronger at that little thing. You know, uh, I remember, I love reading the stories about the old Oilers, Wayne Gretzky and that group. And after practice, they would stay at center ice and they would compete who could hit the crossbar at one of the nets at the end. And they would go until somebody did it and somebody won. So is there a competition game that you have? Like after practice, when you're working, is there a competition you do against your teammates or even against yourself? Uh, we do a couple. Um, sometimes it's just to flick uh, all the pucks in the bucket. And that can take a while. Um, sometimes we change it up. We can go top of the circle, crossbar. Um, we can go tipping in front of the net. Uh, we practice our face up. Like it's all those little things that are gonna make you better, but you're also having fun doing it. So, and it brings a little competition with your teammates. So that's even better. Merrick? Okay, good to have good, you back. Thank you. Yeah, Melody, the good questions are back. Sorry you had to put up with that with Elliot, but uh, here's your reprieve. Okay, if you don't mind, I want to go back to Sochi because I do have a bunch of questions because uh, I'm so fascinated by you guys in, in Sochi. It was such a fun event to follow. Um, I believe Kaylee Humphreys wrote you guys a letter mm -hmm. before that game with the United States. Um, her and Heather Moyes had just won, I think, their second gold, and – do you remember what was in the letter? Who read it to you? What were the circumstances around that one? Do you recall? Yeah. Um, obviously, the night before our final, it was their final. And we were at the village in our dorms. And our entire team was in that tiny room watching them uh, compete. And I remember one of our players had a stick. Uh, and we would yell, hit the wall for the U.S. To, when they were going down. And every time, it was so funny, every time they would say hit the wall, they would hit the wall. And they were just losing time, losing time. And then uh, Humphrey went down and they had a perfect run. And that was amazing. They won gold. It just really inspired us that we need to be believing in what we have as a team. And then the next day, um, I'm pretty sure they gave the letter to our captain that was Caroline Wallet and she wrote the letter to us and it was quite special she like they they just wanted to wish us good luck thank you for watching them and uh if i remember correctly they said something about um make sure that the us are hitting the wall <laughs> the, the other thing i'm curious about as well um because when you guys won that game. I mean, the entire country just exploded. I would imagine that you would have had, I mean, everybody's tweeting about it. Everyone's, you know, it's a big celebration in the country. Um, was there anybody who texted you, got in touch with you, sent messages to you that surprised you, whether it is a politician or an entertainer, or, I mean, you had the whole country's attention, Melody. Did anyone send you a message where you said, wow, I had no idea it was this big. <laughs> um, I don't remember like someone in particular, but um, I remember that uh, I, we got like letters from the government of Canada after a while and a little medal. And mm -hmm. we could also go sign the book, uh, which was quite special. We also went in uh, Ottawa uh, mm -hmm. to the Parlement and then that was always like I think everyone you meet after and every person that takes the time to congratulate you it doesn't go unnoticed and there's so many and that's what's great about the Olympic is that it brings the the country together and it doesn't matter if you're a female or male or if you play sport or not like everybody is all together and you get cheered on and i think that that's amazing it's it's part of the olympic is one part of the olympic that I, I really enjoy okay last sochi question i swear you scored your first olympic goal against switzerland did you save the puck <laughs> uh i think they did pick it up yes and i still have it uh in my room here um yeah it's quite special like you scored so many goals throughout your career, but 
you don't remember uh, most of them, but that one at the Olympic, your first one, you finally made your dream to go to the Olympic and then you score a goal. It's quite special. And yeah, I, I think I'll always, always remember how it was and uh, the feeling of it to contribute to my team. Now, okay, is that your I'm favorite? Done, oh, those are great <laughs> questions. Is that your favorite goal or is there a goal that you remember that you love more than that one? Um, probably not my favorite goal because it was kind of a garbage goal, but <laughs> <laughs> a lot to me i would say probably uh my shootout goal in pyeongchang yeah one. okay uh let's see some uh viewer questions here okay here uh maria any interest in joining the hockey broadcast world when you're done playing and if the answer is yes you can take jeff's job but not mine <laughs> <laughs> very good question maria um i think like i'm open to anything right now like I I have a back in sport uh, and physical education to become a teacher. I'm coaching part time at the University of Montreal, and yeah, I love doing all this social media stuff. So um, I don't know where life's gonna bring me after hockey, but I'm open to uh, suggestions. That's for sure. Now, when you when you now that you're coaching. Do you understand why coaches are always mad at players? <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Um, I think I do. Uh, and funny enough, I think it helps me understand the game even more. Like it brings you another perspective. Um, coaches are working so hard to make practice plan and to make sure all the players are doing right and taking care of all the details of the of the team and i think it made me realize how much work coaches put into and um it makes me really grateful as a as a hockey player that i can notice that work and that i can be thankful for it um while the hamsters were playing with my uh macbook here uh did you guys talk about kim st pierre at all no, I did not. That's a good one. So she gets the nod going into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Outstanding goaltender. I mean, what a, what a career uh, she had. Fellow Quebecer uh, as well. Do you have a thought or two, Melody, on, on Kim St. Pierre? That's amazing. I love her story. And I'm so, like, she's the first goalie to be inducted, if I'm not mistaken. And, yeah, her story, like, she's been cut from Team Quebec so many times. I don't even think she made Team Quebec. And she went mm all the way to Team Canada and when I did heard that story as a little girl even though she was a goalie and I was a forward it kind of inspired me to keep going and I think she has inspired so many uh, players throughout her career and she's such an amazing goalie but she's an even better person and she deserves all the recognition uh, that she has very very deserving you, you forget they talk about the triple gold club you yeah. think about it she's won worlds she's won olympics she's won clarkson cup like that's triple gold for kim st pierre and also i think we should melody also ask you about just the future of women's hockey um there was a really good article today in the athletic by Haley Salvian about it and just where do you think we're going and are you do you believe that someday in the future this will be settled to your satisfaction I hope so. Um, yeah, I strongly believe in our product that we have right now. And um, with the PWHPA right now, we're, we're about, for the people watching, we're about 200 players, the best player in the world. All the Olympians are standing out. They're not playing in the actual league um, to make sure that we're pushing women's hockey in the right direction and that we want to settle for something that we deserve which is something professional that players don't have to work from seven to five and then practice and work out. Um, and I think that's going to come. The NHL have done a very good job so far with us uh, by bringing us uh, to the NHL All-Star um, to give us a little platform. But I think we, we do need more from the media. We need to be on TV. We need more sponsor. And with the PWHPA, we do see uh, sponsors like Budweiser, Secret, Unifor come along and um, helping us to achieve what we want. We're moving in the right direction. We're not there yet. I don't know with the pandemic where everything is going right now. I, I know everybody's losing a lot of money. So 
we're kind of on the standby, but our mission is not changing. We, we want to make sure that um, we're going to leave uh, women's hockey in a better place that we entered. You know, before the, um, before the pandemic shut everything down, it felt like something was close, Melody. Did it feel that way to you? Yeah, uh, we did so many showcases uh, alongside the NHL team. Uh, our last one is, was in Arizona. We went to Chicago, Philly, uh, Montreal, Toronto. So all those NHL teams, um, I think, helped us grow um, the, the PDUM and um, it's helping us to, to make ourselves more, um, to give ourselves more of a platform to play on. And I think if the teams, the NHL teams keep supporting us the way they are right now, um, there's something great ahead of us. Okay. Uh, Randy on fate and I'm with you, by the way, I think, I, listen, I think this thing is so close. Like it's right. Uh, like one of the crushing things about the pandemic is that a lot of things got paused, not just the game, um, but a movement towards a, a women's, a women's professional league. Yeah, um, the WNBA is a great structure that we should be based yes. on. Like they're doing awesome right now. All their um everything they have to on the side not only money wise but um like if they get pregnant they can still return they're still paid those are the things with women that we need to to take care of if you have children like it's very different than men's and this is uh something so close to what we would like to have in hockey mm -hmm. i like what brian burke says about it we do it because it's the right thing to do mm -hmm. That's that's why you do it. Um, Randy on Facebook submits this one. How are you staying in shape during COVID-19 without playing? Uh, like every summer, so far it hasn't changed anything for us. Uh, every summer we take about three to four weeks off um, to enjoy ourselves after the season. And then we get back into off-ice training, which uh, I had a little gym in my garage that I made um and then now we're back on the ice beginning of july so uh, nothing has changed for us but i think we're going to be uh, ready to socialize a little bit more with our kids that's awesome uh listen uh this has been a lot of fun uh our guest has been melody Dawu from the national women's team this is brought to you by the sportsnet bracket challenge powered by ea sports nhl 20. is there anything you would like to leave us with a message from Melody Dau, what would be your message of the day of the season uh, as everyone is looking for you, looking to you for inspiration, Melody? Yeah, I think uh, I'm pretty easy to connect to. So follow me on my social media. If you have any question, um, I'm going to answer them and stay safe and <laughs> train hard. And basically, thank you. Thank you, you guys, for having me on uh, Sportsnet. That's well, listen, uh, here. before we let you go, I honestly love with me. Like I had better questions than Elliot, right? Like that <laughs> pretty think. obvious, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Melody. What much happened at 8.42 of the second period <laughs> in Sochi? I, honestly, I'm going to, uh, before I'm done in broadcasting, Melody, I swear I'm going to ask every member of your team about the Kelly stack shot oh, and the goal. Like, but before I'm done, this is, this is my white whale for each. I'm asking everybody. I swear. Uh, oh. It's been a lot of fun. Melody, <laughs> thank you so much for this. You be well. Thank you. Bye, there she is. Melody Dewey has been our guest on Sportsnet's Ask 31. Thanks for joining us. We are back with this show on Friday post. You know what, Elliot? It's the big tentpole day in the NHL lottery. We're on after that. Thanks for joining us.